Former President Dwight Eisenhower liked to tell the story that when he was a young boy growing up in Kansas, he would go fishing on a river with a friend. The boys used to talk about what they wanted to be when they grew up. His friend wanted to be the President of the United States, and Ike wanted to be a Major League Baseball player. Eisenhower also liked to point out that neither of their wishes came true. Dreams and wishes did come true for San Jose's Greg Shamatov. He dreamed of becoming an astronaut, and through hard work, determination, and a little luck, he got the chance to fly aboard the space shuttle and also walk in space. We took a, just a family trip to Florida for, uh, for the summer, for part of the summer, and so we were watching um, in, in Daytona Beach when uh, um, Apollo 11 launched. And so my father was explaining to me you know, what was going on, and, um, and we had already spent a lot of time watching Star Trek t together, and, uh, and uh, I, I just decided I want to do this. And I told, told my family that I, I, I want to do that when I grow up, and uh, uh, they, they never discouraged me, so I, somehow it, it all came true. Hey, you guys. Hey, you guys looking for, <laughs> hey, you looking for a plumber? <laughs> Shamatov became an engineer and a NASA astronaut. He flew on two shuttles, the Discovery and the Endeavor, and spent six months aboard the International Space Station. Born in Montreal, Canada, he moved to San Jose when he was 11. His father's interest in the space program proved to be a catalyst for the aspiring space voyager. He was an engineer, a mathematician, and you know I just remember that in that, that time, you know, things were going on with the space program, and you know, we would watch TV and see things happening in Mission Control. And you know, as an engineer, you know, he was just fascinated by uh, how people got those jobs. He thought those were the coolest jobs in the world, and he he wished he could have that job. He had no idea how somebody could. You know, have a job like any of the jobs in <laughs> mission control, and um, and uh, so his fascination, you know, was definitely an inspiration for me. Shamatov graduated from Blackford High School in 1980, and then went on to Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. He would eventually go on to earn a master's degree from Caltech and a PhD from MIT. But it was his first year of college that proved to be a difference maker. The important thing that happened, I think, to me in in college was the, the first shuttle launch happened in, in '81, and. You know, I saw the, fir the first shuttle flight, um, and it was actually the first time I called NASA. I, I called NASA and I said, okay, I really want to do this. I've always wanted to do this, but you know, now's my chance to do the right things to make sure it's possible. What do I need to do? The advice was simple. Work hard and be passionate about whatever you do. Shamatov was driven in college, but he also had fun. And after getting his PhD, he applied to the astronaut program. One day, he got the call that everyone wants, but few get from NASA. It is a very surreal thing to, to, to get word that you're selected because, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a long shot for anybody. What followed was a great deal of hard work and training for another year. Flight training, leadership training, survival training, underwater training, and training in different languages. And then, after a lifetime of waiting, he found himself on the launch pad for the first time aboard Discovery. Getting to fly in space was a, is a goal, you know, and it's also a dream come true. But it's all in a, it all happens in a moment, you know. Somehow there's a there's a moment when either your dream comes true or it doesn't, <laughs> and you get to that point. You're sitting there and the clock's counting down, and you know it could scrub any second, right till the last second. And if it doesn't, you know, all of a sudden, boom, your dream is, is coming true. Yeah, I've been thinking about this my whole life, and now here it is, and it's going to happen in five seconds, you know, and then and and then it happens. And of course, you know, I, the neat thing was I had six months on orbit then to, you know, fully appreciate it, you know, and soak it in and feel like I really lived up there. So. Shemitov would spend the next six months aboard the International Space Station, the first four and a half with two Russian cosmonauts. And he got to know his celestial home very well in zero gravity. Life up there is, it's really surprisingly comfortable. I, I, I was, if there's anything that's surprising about the whole mission is how adaptable we are and as a species, I mean, and how comfortable it could be to, to live in that environment. Astronauts put in countless hours working on various experiments and they're always on the clock. When Shamatov did manage to get a little free time, he was able to talk to his wife, Allison, and their two children, Natasha and Dimitri. Shamatov also got some free time to play a little chess. I guess that NASA noticed and the U.S. Chess Federation noticed, 
And then all of a sudden they were requesting that I play a game against these school kids. They were actually, I think they were grade three at the time. And I would play them and they would post the, the, their suggested moves on the internet and the world would vote on the moves. And I lost that game. <laughs> Shamatov achieved a lifelong goal when he returned to the ISS for the second time, and he got the opportunity to walk in space as he worked on the station's robotic arm. To do that work, he had to let go of the handrail, and in the act of letting go, he experienced an epiphany. This handrail, to me, like represented, it's all I could see in my, with my light. It represented my family, my life, everything I knew, every place I knew, everybody on Earth, and uh, it was just, it felt like the edge of the world, you know? And uh, you know, I, I went back this way <laughs> in the end, but it was just a spectacular moment. I'll never, uh, that'll always be in my mind, that, that one moment. Dreams and wishes can be ephemeral, and they fly on gossamer wings for all of us, even for an astronaut named Greg Shamatov.